Mer over here. Mer da da da. Mer da Mer about this way. Mer cha cha pew. Mer pa 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 pa. Mer huzzah! I call it a spell too far. When we take a spell from D&D and we overanalyze it until people are sick of it and they don't want to play board games with us anymore. <laughs> okay, sounds like something I would do. <laughs> uh, Adam is, should be all about this because the, most of the spells we pick are Adam spells where they don't really do shit. I like and we're just gonna... <laughs> but, but there are spells I like, like Grease. Okay. Not Grease. Grease sucks. Anyways, uh, tonight we're talking about Demiplane, the 8th level, which Ryan, you just took in the game, and I wanted, because I want to get into it, I want to talk, I want to get details, I want to see what we can do to exploit it and blow it up so that I'm ready for it and I can shut it down when it comes into me. <laughs> did, did you get my email? I did, but let's start with, uh, let's just start by reading the spell, talking about it, and then any extra things you want to talk about is cool. And then Dave's got some calculations, I'm told, that are great. And I looked up some shit as well. And then we can go from there. Does that sound good? Sure. Anybody, want, anybody want to read the spell or you want me to? Uh, I think you're the only one with a book in front of you. Oh, I just know it from heart. Okay. <laughs> okay. Demi plane. Eighth level conjuration. Casting time, one action. So six seconds to cast it. Range, 60 feet, um, doesn't really matter, close to you, components don't matter, and duration is one hour. So it only lasts an hour, that's interesting, I thought for some reason it lasted longer. Oh no, I know why, okay. So the spell states, you create a shadowy door on a flat, solid surface that you can see within range. That's that 60 feet range. The door is large enough for allow medium creatures to pass through unhindered. Does that mean that a large, well, we'll get to that later. When, un when open, the door leads to a demi-plane that appears to be an empty room 30 feet in each dimension made of wood or stone. When the spell ends, the door disappears and any creature or objects inside the demi-plane remain trapped there, as the door also disappears from the other side. Each time you cast a spell, you can create a new demi-plane or have the shadowy door connect to a demi-plane you created with previous castings of the spell. Additionally, if you know the nature and contents of a demo plane created by the, by the casting of the spell by another creature, you can have the shadowy door connect to its demo plane instead. So that's it. It seems like a pretty simple spell, but I think there's a lot in there, a lot to digest and a lot to talk about. So, um, Can larger than medium creatures go in here? Uh, I would say yes, but they got to squeeze. Agreed. Yep. A squeeze, yeah. Oh, it's weird dear. to me that they actually... They want to get this book. It, it, is um, it says, because I mean, it's weird that they say unhindered. They can go through unhindered. Well, does that mean that huge creatures can go in hindered? That's what I was con just going to say is anything larger than a large creature? Yeah. What can I fit a dragon through here in dragon form? <laughs> I guess, why couldn't they make it? Why can't powerful wizards make doors that are very large? You know, <laughs> you know, like I guess it's too weird to me that they, they stipulated that. But sure. But I think what, I think I, that they they're saying that it's about the size of a normal humanoid door. I agree. And so yeah. if you're bigger than that, you'd have to squeeze through it. But if you're colossal, you probably can't go through. Probably can't go through at all. Yep. Okay. So why would you cast the spell if you're like a titan? <laughs> uh, Put you, your shit in. Like you could reach your arm in and just grab stuff out of it, like a yeah. big old bag. You know, what maybe, I mean? like a big old bag of holding. Maybe you have a variant that's a uh, titan door. Titan demiplane, which makes a door the size of a titan. But regardless, sure. um, so this spell seems abusable. You think so? Yes. I guess. Yeah. So for trapping, the trapping is an interesting aspect. You know, usually when you think about abusable, you're thinking about in combat or uh, something like well, that. Well, I am, but you're thinking offensive. I'm thinking defensively. So I think if you do it offensively, yes. But I mean, you have to force them in, and if you do that, then kudos, that's cool. And then if they have a way to plane shift that, then they're fucked because they're gonna take all your shit. But what I'm thinking is, isn't this basically Adam's hut spell, but for Le Leaman's tiny hut? Yes, but for a longer duration. Kind of. Unless, except for I could see it. Unless you so, can't cast the spell again from inside. How do you get out if you're trapped on the inside after an hour? Well, good question. You I think you have to cast plane shift. Yeah, you can like, plane shift, but can you cast it again, and it creates or it, the door opens again? to your world. Or, See, I don't just, think you can. I don't I mean, think that's, you can either, yeah. It doesn't say you can, and and it seems a little weird because 
the spell is creating a space or connecting to a space. So when you're in it to cast the spell, like it does a totally different thing to get out. I agree. Hang on so. a second. You you made a very interesting distinction there. It says, um, let's see here. When the, 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 it, uh, it when open, the door leads to a demi plane that appears to be empty room, thirty feet in each in each dimension, made of wood or stone. Is it creating that demi plane or just connecting to a spot on some sort of demi plane made of that wood? Huh. Or made so of it's, no, it says it creates. It says each time you cast a spell, you can create a new demi plane. Okay, so that's cool. Or you can have it connect to an existing. Right, one. so that's cool. So it actually does create your only thing, your new thing. It doesn't actually take something that's in play somewhere in the multiverse and make it yours. You're creating something new, which is kind of neat. Right. Yep. Right. Totally neat. Okay, so I, it's not as exploitable as I thought then, because I thought if you could all go in there and just chill for eight hours and then come back out in, in the middle of combat, that seems ridiculous, you know? Well, there is some question yeah. about the duration of one hour. Of If that is something you can't alter, then the door is open for an hour. So sh you can exploit it in the sense that you can go into a medium-sized door and defend yourself inside a 30 by 30 foot room. Well, no, no, no. Aren't all spells dispellable whenever you want, basically? Uh, I think they are, unless they don't. They say they're not. Like disguise self, you can end at any time. True. That's that's a good question. It might be true. I I'm, hope it's true. I'm pretty sure it is. I'm pretty sure any duration spell, like if you're invisible, you can just end it. You don't need to kick somebody to end it. <laughs> right. <laughs> That'd be funny. I do think like like you can put it on any flat surface. So I actually think it's interesting to do it to put it on, on the floor of something. So then I would think people would drop into a 30 by, by 30 foot, <laughs> you know, extra dimensional pit, basically. And I, I, I could see casting it underneath somebody then, which I think that'd be a cool way to exploit it. Yeah, you know, maybe, I mean, they, they, maybe they get a reflex yeah, save, you know. To, 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 stuff. But, you know, if It'd they did that, yeah. or, or there was, you know, some sort of situation where you could disguise it it could be an interesting one hour pit trap yep. that, and if you're that smart hour. you could have like all of your all your enemies go to one demi plane so they're probably going to fight each other when they're stuck in there <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> although they're all waiting to get out so that's the only problem like all of a sudden it's true <laughs> uh so let's talk about travel um what can we do can we does this get rid of all modes of travel and like spells that require anything to travel so i cast you cast demi plane Everybody goes inside, you close it, and then you're the only one who has to travel yeah. or do whatever yes. you want. Um, uh, so we talked about how long you can survive in there. Dave, you did some math on it. What 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 was the uh, just air wise? How long can we survive in there? Um, you you will die of CO two poisoning before you run out of oxygen, basically, because right your body. Yep, and you will officially die die at 16.875 days that's but one will, person or one person right but about half of that so like just over eight and a half or just under eight and a half you will start feeling like it is a curve so once you hit that point you will start breathing faster which i would have you'd have to do the math along a curve so which you're taking deeper breaths which means you would like it actually you die faster than the the 16 days easy because okay. of it, uh, so because of the poison. I'm trying to think. Okay, if we, let's say we stick four people in here. Oh, then it's going to be just. Uh, it'd be like four days before you die. But when do you start exhibiting like the signs of two, two days? After two days, you're basically see, yeah. starting to see shit and yes, your, your body gets more fatigued and yep. stuff. Okay. Yeah. Now Ryan was like, "Well, I'll just throw some fucking plants in there. Then no, that's cool. I'll just make plants, and then we're good." <laughs> it I wonder how that would work. Oh. It actually, there's that like I've read a ton of about it, and people say that it, it they don't produce it fast enough. That's the problem. Well, from what I read, you need for one person in like a ten by ten room, so a small room, you need yep. between three and five hundred plants. Three like, and three five hundred potted potted plants. Right. <laughs> yes. Well, what if you it, did like for one person, you basically made the room like a furry ball of grass and plants with one tiny spot for you to sit on your chair. That's like you, I think you can get close, but what they were saying is microorganisms take up a lot of oxygen that you don't account for, and they yes. it eventually becomes to a point where it's not as it's not even useful anymore. You know, you get to a point in the curve where it's it doesn't help you at all. Like um, in the in the short term, uh, chemists said if you had access to lye. You take a lye and you combine it with water, and then there's a basic because it's a basic solution. It like it combines with the CO2 in the air and pulls out 
a decent amount, but it would just add, you know, it would add 45 minutes, an hour, and stuff like that to the amount of time that you get because you so, need a lot of lye to do the chemical reaction to be able to pull enough CO2 out of the air. All right, what about adding more air in? I know there's not the spell create air anymore, but you could pull in, um, you could summon an air elemental, I'm which not, would. I'm not sure it makes air. Yeah. I like where you're going, though, because I think there are magic items that create air, or if not, you could create one that it's just like kind of like. It's uh, like create water. Or your favorite item that just makes water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What Chalice is... of never in, never spilling water. No, no, no. Right. Don't be stupid. That's not it. It's fucking. <laughs> is, what is it? It's not a bag. Tanker. Tanker of no, that's not it. What is it? God damn it's a that's your floating disc. <laughs> oh my god, you guys are terrible. <laughs> no, it was a it was like a chalice that no, it was made water. I don't remember what it was called. It wasn't a chalice. How dare you? Uh, Go uh goblet of never bottle, bottle of air. Bottle oh. of air is that what does it? Yeah, uh, there's a bottle of air. It's a, it appears to be a normal like a uh, glass bottle with a cork. Like Two thousand gold. It's a cheap item too. Right. Decanter Ooh. of endless water. Water. Uh, chalice. Chalice, motherfucker. Tankard. <laughs> Close enough. No, it's obviously not what it was. For your favorite item, that should definitely be something you know. <laughs> I do like that item. That's a pretty cool item. So they, but they did say, um, okay. So we have the option of putting some sort of air thing in there. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> then, but then you're gonna get into all kinds of pressure issues if you start adding air to it. Because you add air to a, a completely, you know, like if you cast a spell that creates air, you would just be changing the pressure because you are in a sealed container. So, I don't know how pressure. Well, you of course have to have a, another item that sucks out an equal amount mm, of, there you of, go. of there you go. unpure air. So, you know, like, you could have a couple bags. You could have, like, 12 <laughs> bags of holding filled with, like, pure air, and then you could have 12 empty bags of holding well, that are primed to suck out. You have, uh, not sure you have the, decan kind of you have the decanter work. of endless water, right? <laughs> Why would that uh, not work? With some simple uh, simple physics, right, we can put the, the two rods into a, a thing of water, have the tubes come out of it, and do what the electrolysis, if you remember that from physics class where you split water Fido into high Asia. hydrogen uh, hydrogen and oxygen atoms so mm -hmm. with electricity good thinking with electricity so we have lightning what why do we have lightning because of spells because yeah, we have a spell <laughs> oh just constant lightning spell forgot <laughs> what <laughs> we created sh we have shocker lizards okay okay that's fine I want, i'm getting to a point where it's not easy is what we're hearing it's not no, easy it's to, not create, right to create your man cave in this fucking <laughs> in this uh <laughs> demo plan you're creating which is cool but right Oh, sorry, what Adam? What if there was a monster, like a rust monster, that took all the CO2 out? <laughs> you create a monster that just... Create a monster that eats nothing but CO2. Sure. Um, it's called a facehugger. I don't know how you feed it, really, when you're not in it. But uh, So Ryan mentioned, um, why don't you talk a little bit about what you found about... Because this just creates a demiplane, and it's not a secure demiplane, right? It's just a place that exists that you could probably find? Or what What you, do you learn? Well, that that was my uh, sort of query, is that if you look at the wording at the end of the spell, it says that, additionally, if you know the nature and contents of a demiplane created by casting of this spell by another creature, you can have the shadowy door connect to its demiplane instead. So in other words, it's saying anyone can connect to your demiplane, and I can connect to anyone's demiplane, which sounds like that's not good if we're going to keep our most important treasures there. I'm not putting that box in there. <laughs> but wait, wait, wait. Just wait for it. It all depends on the how you read it. And this one is extremely vague and I think subject to, you know, a judgment call. Right. But but it says like basically if you know the nature and contents of the demi plane. <laughs> and so you go to yourself like what the fuck does that mean? So like the nature is super vague. Like we know what nature means in like like literature and hand wavy sense, but like from a precise spell, like what degree of nature do you need to know? Do you just need to know it's a room? So I can say like, I cast demiplane. I want to go to a room, and then you win. Or do you have to know that it was a room created by a specific caster, or what degree? And then similar for the, you know, it says 
nature and contents, like, do you know how much about the contents do you need to know? Do you just need to say, like, it's got valuables in it? Because then you could say, I want to f- teleport to a room of valuables. <laughs> and then you steal everybody's shit. Is that because now you said something about its nature and you said something about its content? Or do you have to be more specific where you have to say every item that's in there? So this is where I was proposing to Chris. Like, I sent this email, and I was I was thinking that for contents, it should be, like, significant things. And it would be cool if you could then put a parchment with, like, a secret pass phrase on it that's that you fold up and you put it in there. And you maybe give it give one to your your friends and say, hey, if I ever die and you want to get to my demi plane, you're going to need to know this. Um, and then that would be you'd have to describe the contents with that level of detail of saying like there's a there's a parchment with a passphrase and the passphrase is blah blah blah. And by, you know, and, but without that, it's basically a free for all. It's like a basically a wizard's like backyard or like Central Park. Anybody can go. You know, so there's very many ways to review that. You know. Sure. Yeah. Um, they have like there's the you know the necklace of adaptation, which is the wondrous item uncommon, and it would have to it this line itself. It says, okay, here's the item. What the item says: while wearing this necklace, you can breathe normally in any environment. Comma, and you have the advantage on saving throws made against harmful gases and vapors, such as cloud kill and stinking cloud effects, inhaled poisons, and the breath weapons of some dragons. It says any environment. Would that be a vacuum? I think that'd be fine. It was interesting to me because I thought you were going to comment on Ryan's. <laughs> he put this Absolutely good argument, not. and then you're like, nope. Let's, I'm still back on trying to help survive in here. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I, I, li- I, like, I like it that what you can do. Oh, no, no. Th- this is, a, right. this is a, a practical question we need to discuss and come up with an answer for. Otherwise, it's going to be, oh, yeah, I know that guy. He's an art. He, I've been, I know him. He's a mage. He casts shit. I bet he casts Demiplane. I'm going to cast Demiplane. I want to connect to his Demiplane, Demiplane. and there's probably yeah. valuables in there. And Demiplane. I get to go in there and yep. steal whatever I want. So, I don't know. Um, I'm, if... I'm willing to open, uh, listen, listen to arguments before I think I, I might have a, a suggestion. If somebody is that powerful enough to fucking do that, I would fucking let them do it. What do you mean? That powerful? All you need is a scroll, an 8th level scroll. You go buy an 8th oh, yeah. level scroll, or you find your wizard and say, hey, I know you're fucking strong, and I know it's going to cost a lot of money, but I will pay you back in spades if you just cast this 8th level spell for me, because I'm going to go rob this motherfucker of everything he has about <laughs> Okay, so... Alright. Okay, or think of it this way. Think of it this way. You guys run across a wizard. He's super strong, yep. right? And, and you, you, maybe you're friends with him, maybe you're foes with him, but you get he gets away, and then you're like... Hey, Ryan, why don't you cast fucking Demiplane and, to go to his Demiplane and say Albazar's Demiplane with some valuables in it, and then we'll just go rob it. <laughs> and, right. if, and if he doesn't have it, well, no no harm lost. But if he does, then there you go. You could actually Ooh. just go to, like, a library, find a list of all the powerful mad mages, <laughs> and just start doing it. <laughs> I mean, would you even need to? You could just say, like, I would like to connect to a room filled with treasure and then like you get the treasure and you go out and you say tomorrow i'm going to connect to a different room no, filled with treasure because this one says you have to have the na- uh you know the nature and contents of devil created by a casting the spell by another creature so i'm gonna okay i'm gonna assume that another creature means you need to know that creature i know what you're saying i'm reading too much into that but i, I... it doesn't say that i mean i agree that that's a good choice well, the nature but because that, the nature it... is what gets to me the nature and contents nature like how do you get the nature of a room that you already know unless you know who created that like what's that right. mean what's the nature of a room that everybody has the same room well that's what i said is <laughs> i think the minimum nature is simply stating it's a room it's a 30 by 5 30 room and you're done but like that's a pretty bad thing because that basically is every demi plane match has that nature so i think i think it would be a you, the judgment should be that you have to be more specific in the nature than that. Right. But like, like by like, if you were a lawyer and you said, "What does that say?" Sure. Then you sure, could sure. do it. I know what you mean. I but I, I think that's just a bad judgment yeah, to, yeah. to rule on it that way. Yeah. Yeah, I I kind of like it. I don't like it being password protected, like you said. <laughs> but I do like it being <laughs> like I need to know who cast it. I know it doesn't say that, but and I I need to know like. <laughs> 
specific items that are in it and, and be, you have to be specific or like I there needs to be you know there needs to be some knowledge about what's actually there rather than just valuables <laughs> sure <laughs> yeah it, I agree and that would be kind of it's an interesting hook for an adventure like if you find an old tome and it's like this dude this dude created a demic plane and his name was this and he has ivory statue of blah 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 in there you know it'd be kind of interesting I think I don't know Right, but right. I would like if we had did it that way, then you could then say like, well, in order to make this room secure, we need to gather a handful of items of a wide variety, you know, so that that becomes essentially essentially the code to get in. So it's got a toothpick, it's got a candlestick. Right, but do you need to know everything, or do you need to know like one or two things, or? Yeah, see, that's where, t to me, I think. The significant contents is what you should, because even like, even if you tried to let your wizard friends, hey, come over to my demi plane. I got like tons of beer in there, and they were like, go to demi plane that that, that Bob created with the beer, and there's like, mm, sorry, you need to say how many beers and what kind of beer. And it's like, fuck, we just wanted to have some beers, you know. So yeah. I, I I think that you you got to be a little looser, but. I think significant content. So anything that's important to the caster is what I almost would say. Yeah, I'm still stuck on the word nature of the spell or the a place. Like maybe you need to know, be more more familiar with what it is, like what the feeling of the room is rather than what the actual room is to be. Yeah, the feeling of the room. Like, right. is it a room that you, you know what I mean? Like, is it a fucking, is it your living room? Is it Ryan's living room? We all know what that is, but we don't need to name every single item that's in your living room in order to know what it is. Like, if I needed to create a, a demi plane to Dave 2's fucking basement, I could because I kind of know that area. And maybe it's because I've been there. I don't know. But... You, you know what it's like without knowing the actual items. Like, I don't think I could actually name one specific item that's in Dave 2's basement, but I know the feeling of it. I know the nature of it. That That's what right. Dave, uh, Dave's 2 underwear. His underwear's definitely there. <laughs> He's probably got a kid or two down there. Um, yeah, right there. And I think that yeah, works. Yeah, I think... Cat poop. <laughs> what? And that's where I was saying, if you saw the room, then you know the nature. It's more like if you had to tell someone about the nature. That's where it gets tricky because yeah. if you, if you unless you're going to invite them in, which I think is a fair way to say now you know the nature of this room. And you know the vampire. You know, but now, now how do you do that without having them go in there? How can I write you I a letter, you. You. old fashioned times, to say here's the nature of my room so you can get there? Yeah, that's tough. I, I don't know what to, I don't know what they have to actually think about. What do you guys think? How do you? What's the nature of a room without actually going to the room? And how do you get to that? Like pretend like you're a mage and you want to go to your friend's demi plane. He's like, it, it's like this. What would you expect to get from him before you you could get there? Um, I would expect to uh, to know. Uh... It, yeah, basically have uh, encountered the room and been able to. Uh understand all the five senses okay hang on hang on I you would, said encountered yeah. the room so that means you have to have seen it yes oh i don't know if i like that i don't know if you have to, I, be able to see it i want the five senses i want you to just be able to you know, not not necessarily taste the room, taste but the room. The, you, know. you lick the room right now <laughs> right. but you know that like you know you know the smell of a room you know what it looks like you know you know like the sound of the room like kind of like the you know the ambiance the feeling of like how it's set up and stuff like that so so are you indicating that you can't get to this room unless you've been there? I like the idea of that better. Uh, yeah, uh, I I agree. I, I like that. I'm just not sure if that's how the spell... Because the spell kind of tells you, like, you can go to rooms, you know, without... It doesn't say you have to be there. It just says the nature of the room. <clears throat> can you... Not to shift this conversation, but can you cast Demiplane on a Demiplane? Uh, I don't see why not. Honestly, I don't so, think it buys you much. It just, but... yeah, because you don't have to actually go to that demo plane to get to the second demo plane. If right. you're, if you're yeah. oh, okay, I it, thought it's not like I a was tunnel thinking... system. <laughs> All right, but that so, would be kind of neat if, if you had other... to do that. So the only way to get to your super secret demo plane was to go through your like less secure demo plane. <laughs> the other thing is, could you just to get out of the demi plane cast banishment on yourself? Uh yes, you yes. could. 
definitely could. Yeah. But it's a random banishment. It wouldn't. Would it I, jolt you back to the prime, I think or would banishment it take sends you? you back to your home? Doesn't it? I believe Blink sends you back to your home plane. If I'm not mistaken, I'm not gonna look it up. So right, but... that's. I mean, it'd be a random destination, but. Oh, as but, far as on the plane, a yeah. random destination. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, um. What about gate? Could, can't gate get you there? Probably. Gate gets you anywhere. You have to know where you're going, right? Uh, I guess I don't know. I so. You gotta know when to hold them too. But, like, what does gate say? Spell gate... listing. Right. You should be able to. <laughs> What's awesome is banishment. Gate. If like if you are on if you're native to a plane, like let's say you try to banish Ryan while he's bad example but let's say you try to banish somebody from the world we play on uh you try to banish them they go to a harmless demi plane which may be the demi plane you created with <laughs> oh, demi plane awesome. <laughs> um just so randomly. Gate says you conjure a portal linking an unoccupied Ooh. space you can see within range to a precise location on a different plane of existence right but this one says, read the last word where it says, when you cast a spell, you can speak the name of a specific creature. A pseudonym, title, or nickname doesn't work. If that creature is on the plane, other than the one you're on, the portal opens and the name creature in immediate vicinity and draws the creature yeah. through to the nearest unoccupied space. Right, so what's your question? On your side. So why wouldn't you be able, why would you just wait one or two more levels and just gate to their demi plane? Well, sure. No, no, well, no. if they're there, they might not be there. there. Right, exactly. Yeah. It, it goes to where And you're actually. Yeah. And they're actually pulling them through to you. Right. And it probably leaves the gate open for a second, does it? I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, concentration up to a minute. No, so but... yeah, you could go through maybe behind them and, and go into their living room or wherever they were hanging out or their bathroom. It's like I was on the pod. But I, I, I think if they weren't happened to be in their demi-plane, then you wouldn't get access to their demi-plane. So if you knew that a gr great wizard was going to be putting all his treasure in a demo plane, you could do some sort of like heist planning, I think, and say, like, we're going to cast Gate at tw exactly 12.52 when he should be entering his demo plane. And that should allow us enough time to, to disable all the alarms. And, you know... Yes, you can make a heist I can movie. I can see that. Yes. You can make a heist movie, totally. Sure. All right. I got another one for you. Can you planar bind somebody to a demi plane? Uh, what does planar binding say? Uh, attempt to bind. You attempt to bind celestial fey element or fiend to your service. Okay, so no. <laughs> because one, you're none of those things, and two. <laughs> Typically, the creature is summoned into the center of blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's, a, that's okay. like a conjure. You conjure somebody to your plane oh. and bind them to your service. Could you forbidden? I think you could forbidden to your area, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Don't see why not. As long as... I mean, it creates a tangible place. It's just it's a, right. somewhere else. So it's in the... Somewhere. I, I don't really know what, what fucking plane it exists on. I mean, I know it's a demi-plane, but a lot of times those are like... On specific planes, you know? yeah, it doesn't like say the, like on the ethereal or, or astral, or yeah. right? Hmm. Okay. So, Ryan, I think you should just fill it up with just fill it full, just full of zombies, and they get all super hungry because they don't need to breathe. Or golems. reverse grab, golems reverse golems gravity, that anything. shit though. Yeah, and then all of a sudden you just like open it up and be like, and then just let them all out on people. That'd be pretty cool, actually. It's like a summoning spell. <laughs> But they have like bears or wolves, right? Just just tons of wolves. Well, undead what? bears and wolves. They can't breathe. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you did bring that up though, like the idea of using it to transport people. And this is kind of an example of that. I think it would work pretty good. Like you could probably get easily like thirty people in the in the room and then you could cast one teleport and two planner bindings to essentially Demi you know, Demi first, planes. Demi -planes, Demi -planes, sorry. Yeah. So it's the first one to open the door to put them in. Teleport to go where you want to go, yeah. then from that place open the door to the same plane to let them out. Yeah, so it's is like it a badass Trojan horse? Is it thirty by thirty? Yeah, by thirty. Is it? I don't remember. It's, is it a cube? It's, it's 30, thirty by thirty. With thirty by thirty. Yes. Okay, so oh yeah, she could fetch floors. That'd be <laughs> that's fucking what badass. I, that's what I was getting at. You could make floors, so you could actually get like three times the number of people in here, basically. And you could get yeah, that would be a fucking army breaker, wouldn't it? Like <laughs> yeah, that's like a hundred people. Yeah. It's got to be more than that. I bet you it's a shitload yeah, more than that. Yeah. It's easily a hundred people. Yes, Let's just put yes, it that yes. way. 
and, and and that is a cool. I like the Trojan horse idea. Like yeah. if you if you needed to get a hundred people behind enemy lines, and you just got one guy sneaking in there, and actually the range on it comes into play there too. Yeah. Because what did it say? The range is sixty, 60 feet. feet. So. so now you just have to be within sixty feet of the viewing somewhere inside, and yeah. now you've got a door where sick. You know, hundred people. What you can do invisible. You know, invisible flying. You're you're good. Um, hey, so hang on a second. Remember at Gen Con when they had those five foot squares set up, like an actual yes. five foot square? Yeah. And yeah. we can like basically, can yeah, we could basically all fit in a five foot square. I like, <coughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah. We're going back to the air consumption then. The beer air consumption. Like all oh, the, the the air would go. You'd it go would go quick. quick you have to get but it done. If you only need five minutes to get everybody in, give everybody out, you're fine. I mean. Yeah. Right. Hmm. Mm, interesting. See, siege ideas go all right out the window. Who needs trebuchets when you got two wizards that can cast them? I was like. But it's funny if you look at like eighth level spells. It's not like even if you could do that, and you called it Trojan Horse, and it said you can allow a hundred people to pop out somewhere, and you compare it with the other things. You know, the, all the other things are like control weather, destroy area level town i mean there's like there's a lot of like large there's no level cut town like like okay well what are you doing like you're an a like what well, you're a 15th level caster right say you sent 100 10th level mages <laughs> that but they're, they're already strong like that's sort of that didn't help them that much I they did not need your help 50 10th level mages and 50 fighters in front of them to protect them and then they work in duel one actually protects the other and with the defensive right. ability to shield drop block the shield shit oh forget about it. this right but, I, but i'm win. saying like <laughs> you put more you put basically you put more mages into the thing and you just <laughs> no you totally then... win the point my point is simply that now the hard part wasn't making a room for them the hard part was assembling you know that many mages and having them fight with you. If you've already accomplished that, then you don't even need demi plane. Like they're like, well, we don't need demi plane. We'll get there. Don't worry about it, bro. You know, like because they're super powerful. Right. Yep. What happens if you uh, put an anti magic field on yourself and then go into a demi plane? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing, because your field would make the spell not work. But anyways. Right. Um. Yeah. Okay. So I think we've talked about it a, a little bit. Uh, I think in my game, anyways, I think that. You're going to need not intimate knowledge. You don't have to have sex with the room, but you do need to know like the feel of the room, like what's in the right. room, what type, what type of room is it? Are there is are the walls painted? Are there nice uh, pottery things around? You know what I mean? Something like that in order to get oh, and you, have, and I'm gonna just, you know what I'm going to go one more one more and say you have to know who did it. You can't just be a random one. You got to know whose it is and what it looks like. Bam. And so what about actually, the contents? Do you need to know? How much of the contents do you need to know? You need to know the relevant. feel of the room. But that's, it says you need to know the contents, too. Right. Uh, so, of the contents, yeah, you need to know one or two specific objects. Like, specific. Like, there's a statue of an eagle flying its wings with bronze eyes or something like that. Can I put in a parchment? No. <laughs> then Can I put in a, an just, ornate wizard, box with carved wizard, letters that say... Marks. The secret password. No, then it'll just require a, an ornate box with carved letters on it. Bullshit. You can you can write <laughs> a glyph. But you I know, need to pass. I'm not know. even asking for two-factor authentication. I just want a single I know, but password. I don't even need a username. I just want a just, password. You, all you gotta do is say, it's like, <laughs> I create a creature. The creature is called an ubata. The ubata looks like this and has blue eyes or something like that. Now somebody has to know what an ubata is. They have to... Uh, look at the statue of the Ubata. You know, it's something you can create in your mind. I call, and nobody else could know. It's basically the same thing if you think about it. Ha have an artist create make like it a low, and kill a low level spell that uh, every three hours changes the color, the arrangement of all the furniture, moves stuff around, is constantly randomly moving things around. So then someone would not know what what's in this room. But you would know that would be the, the nature either. of the room. <laughs> but you you can get in there. Can't you get in there? You can because it's your spell. You can always I don't go know if you have a life. special door. I think you actually have to know the nature. And as well. okay, can you cast? You can cast multi demi planes, right? Multiple. Yes. Right. Yes. How do you differentiate? You cast a spell. Here's a spell. It's this many words long. You cast it. It opens up the, your demi plane. How do you make sure that I don't want to open up number one? I want to open number two. What oh do yeah, you it does say or you, you can, created. Yeah, you can connect with, with the previous, previous casting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. 
you you can automatically connect to your own. Well, list. regardless, Dave. I mean, if we did that, then it would be hard to get your friends in. The whole point of this is you want to be able to get your friends in to get your clone once you die, right? Because Ryan's gonna die, his soul's gonna go to his clone sitting in there. You need to be able to get in there, otherwise he's gonna be stuck there because within yeah. four days. Yeah. So you need to be able to get in there. Um, no, no, he's gonna have all types of magic items to keep him sustained and stuff, um, but not be able to cast plane right. shift. It's gonna be weird. But Ryan, so. You also remember when I, we were working on your spell the spells and we came up with like just a list of tons of fun spells that like don't exist like teleport like if I die right if my body dies it teleports all of my stuff all of things that I consider my belongings to a secure location yes like like I want that spell that spell is awesome because then it's like oh my body dies yeah I don't care about I don't care about my body anymore my body body's dead I just want all my stuff yeah teleported that, that's to cool except for you know what. Duration, concentration. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the fucking. No, no. What if we cast it thirty days in a row? It becomes permanent. Three hundred sixty-five days in a row. <laughs> okay, that's fine. But that's such a. I think that would be a cool spell. It doesn't seem to be that. It seems powerful, but not ridiculously powerful to teleport all your stuff to the demi plane. No, no. Think teleport a bag of holding. I think that uh, it's not. I don't think you need. I, I like not having to be so specific because otherwise it seems ridiculous and dumb. So, it's the feeling well, of the spell that matters, not the not the actual words of the spell. <laughs> but do you think that they that, that they actually want people to be able to easily get into other people's? No, and I think you can find creative ways that aren't coming up with passwords on a parchment <laughs> to, to make that so. You know. <laughs> That's fine. I mean. Um... Yeah, it, it's... If somebody yeah. figures out that you have a, a six-legged bear with a fucking giraffe arm and a gorilla leg, uh, one gorilla leg, one Marilith leg, one eye, that's the diamond, you know what I mean? <laughs> and you call right. that creature a cockatoo or something, then that would be sufficient to me to be like, that's pretty fucking well-protected, that nobody knows what a cockatoo is, nobody knows what it looks like except for me and my friends. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, but I would say that's essentially the password. Essentially, trick. but not not stupid like a password. Not as not as lame. But not, that's why I said a phrase, a secret phrase. A secret phrase sounds like you could use that in D and D. Secret phrase sounds dumb. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. That's enough of this. This has been a spell too far. I think we've gone too far. Uh, <laughs> if you have, oh, very nice. if you have suggestions about future spells to to di diagnose way too much, then let us know. Trademark. We'll, we'll get trademarks. Yes. Yes. Trademark. <laughs>